Thanks so much for the opening addresses. Thank you very much to Monsieur Bertrand Dumont, Monsieur Augustin de Romanet for this opening of the inaugural day of the Paris Infra Week. And as we go on, we are opening the first fireside chat of the day. And I'm very happy to be here and to be holding this first fireside chat with Patrick Poigny, Chairman and CEO at Total. Monsieur Poigny, thank you for being here. And thank you for being here for the first chat of the inaugural day. Good morning. Thank you for welcoming me. We've heard a lot, of course, from the opening address as well on the impact and the circumstances that are so challenging nowadays for everybody with the COVID-19 unprecedented crisis. Let me start with asking you, how is the business going for Total amid this, amid this crisis? Uh, this crisis uh, raised many issues to us. First, of course, the priority was the continuity of operation and the health and safety of our people around the world. I can say that uh, we, we stopped none of our operations around the world, thanks to uh, uh, incredible dedication of our people. Of course, we had to reorganize a lot of our operations, but we managed to maintain it. And you know, energy uh, is at the core of the uh, economy. Of course, we, we suffered a uh, 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 loss of demand. And in fact, our industry even made an incredible uh, mistake, as you know, because in April, at the time where the pandemic was peaking and growing up, and the demand was, uh, and the economic, world economy was declining, uh, some of the producing countries decided to increase their production. The result is that the oil price collapsed dramatically down to uh, something we've never seen since I think the last time was 2001, and the $20 per barrel. Then it recovered because these same countries realized their huge mistake, but, but the inventories are very high around the world, and because the demand, of course, is really affected. Uh, globally. Uh, and so uh, today we have some segments of a business which recovered, in particular in Europe, our retail business, which was at the bottom and uh, by May, I would say May, June, now is almost at the level where it was last year. And electricity as well, which was quite down, I would say by 20% today is almost at the, at the, at the positive level. So that means that, means that the uh, European industry came back to, I would say, in action. Uh, but but we still face, uh, I would say, uh, I would say, low oil price and refining margins are absolutely terrible. So it's, uh, but we have to face. At the same time, I have the chance to chair one of the a very robust company. We know we had, uh, we know that in this business we had to uh, take care of our balance sheet and uh, low gearing, and so uh, we have been able to go to go through the to weather the storm. I would say at the until now. The, the, the company is, is robust and solid, and so we face a situation, and, uh, and we are able to do it for at least, um, I, I, I'm afraid, not only a few months, but a few years. Let me ask you this. With everything that you said, how as well for Total, how can you balance, and how do you actually balance, of course, between uh, short-term and long-term investment in these very uncertain times? You know, in, in the energy field, of course, we, we think medium and long term. On the short term, we had only one action to take. You know, uh, when the price of the barrel of the for, of, is going down from 60 to $40 per barrel for total, it represents a, a loss of $10 billion of cash flow. So, of course, immediately the reaction is to be cautious, I would say, to, 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 lower, to lower our investments. We have reduced them by 3 to $4 billion to lower our return to our shareholders because it's just a, ma a question of managing our cash, even if we raised some debt at the same time. Uh, but but uh, we need to prepare the future. And for us, the future is, of course, uh, quite challenging. It's a climate change, you know, it's in front of us. So we have, to, uh, we have to deal with it. And in fact, I think it's quite symbolic that in the middle of the crisis, by beginning of May, uh, Total has announced its uh, climate ambition uh, to get to net zero by 2050 uh, at a worldwide basis together with society and at a European basis uh, scale as well. So I think it's symbolic, but you know, permanently we have to prepare the future. We invest not for today, we invest for 5, 10, 15 years. And so uh, that's a, a strong commitment that we take, we took. Uh, embarking not only on one side, of course, our, our own emissions of our operations, being net zero on scope one and two, I think it's obvious. Uh, so we have to, uh, 
leverage all the technologies and focus our teams, by the way, because it's a matter of uh, focusing the teams on that direction, lowering the emissions. And then, but we have extended this uh, commitment not only to our own operations, but also to uh, the products used by our customers, because in fact, in the oil and gas uh, industry, 10% of the emissions are coming from the operations, but 90% are not coming from us, but from the customers. It's a famous cup free. But may I remind to everybody that uh, when a plane is flying, the emission of the plane are the scope one of the airline company. They are the scope three of Total, the scope three of the plane manufacturer, the scope three of the engine manufacturer, and even a small part of it is the scope three of my friend ADP. So it means that uh, what, is ad what is additive is a scope one is additive. If all the companies were eliminating their scope one and two, we would be net zero. But of course, we have also individual customers for which we need to, to work. And all that to say that uh, in, our, in our world, it's not only a question of supply, it's also a question of demand. And if we want to get to net zero, our society, we'll have to change the demand patterns, not only just to change the supply mix. And the plans of Total, of course, going, uh, going net zero emissions company, go in line, as you said, with the whole EU green agenda and the efforts and the ambitions of the European Union going neutral by 2050. Let me ask you this, how is it also impacting Total's focus and the company's self-positioning and the balance between being oil and gas company and energy company for the future, for a bit of a longer perspective? To be clear, we are no more an oil and gas company, in fact, and I announced, clarified last week, by the way, to our investors, the way we want to transform Total in a broad energy company. And for the first time in the, in the history of the group, I have presented a, a production profile, not only of oil and gas, but also of electricity. So what we do is that uh, our, our challenge, and our, I would say, but uh, it's a huge opportunity to transform the company to become again a broad energy company by uh, on one side, to continuing to increase the energy we'll uh, produce for the world because there is no doubt that the growing populations in emerging countries, which is aiming to higher li living standards, will require more energy in the future. I know that there are people thinking that we could just have a declining world and an increasing growth is not at all what we think. Because when we observe, of course, to the rest, of, to, to the vast majority of the world, and again, it's not only a matter only on Europe and the OECD countries, it's a matter of looking to what is happening in Asia and in Africa, where we have a huge aspiration to better life, this will require, require more energy. Uh, that's the first trend, that's a global trend. So we need to continue to develop the company and we have announced that we want to develop the company but in two axes. One is electricity and producing by 2030 more than 100 terawatt hour per year, which represents more or less 500,000 barrels of oil per day equivalent, which is huge. Today it's only, we are only at 50, so we want to multiply by 10 of electricity production, mainly from renewables, mm -hmm. let's be clear. Renewables becoming being the, one, the fastest energy market for the coming uh, uh, 20, 30 years. And so we want to embark in this fast growing mar market being, uh, be with, uh, I would say, uh, uh, great ambitions. And the second part of our growth will be from, will come from natural gas, uh, because natural gas in part of the LNG, liquefied natural gas, we are number two in the world. And this is a, an energy segment which is growing by 10% driven mainly by the Asian country, China, India, with, of course, uh, it's a, I know that people always say it's a fossil uh, energy, but in fact, it's the shift from coal to gas. And you know, last 10 days ago, I think President Xi of China announced that China wants, go to, wants to go to carbon neutrality by 2060. It's a huge announcement and commitment. And of course, that means that years after years, they will have to decrease the, 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 the space of coal in their energy mix, and of course renewables will grow, but natural gas will also be there. So Total grow, will grow from gas, from, uh, from uh, electricity, and on the oil side, I would say, uh, will be stable and even declining. In fact, uh, our production during the next decade, if I'm looking 2030, 2020, 2020, 2030, and at the same time, in fact, biofuels uh, production will increase, because liquid use of energy, like I think to planes and things like that, we will continue to, to need some liquid fuels for energy. 
And the last command, don't make a mistake, in all the scenarios when you observe to carbon neutrality, there is still, I would say, 40, 50 million barrels of oil per day being produced by 2050. Uh, of course, we are at 100, so I mean, huge decline, but still there. And so on our side, what we will do is invest only on oil projects, which I would say low cost, because of, you see in such an environment, price of oil will diminish. And so we have to be, if we want to continue to invest in oil, to be safe on that side. The second remark on oil, there will not be a, a big uh, decline. It will be very progressive, because again, the adaptation of the energy system at a world level will require some time and conviction. Before I go into the uh, specifics of the financing the energy transition, let me ask you quickly on oil and gas projects. What are those emerging difficulties when it comes to financing those projects nowadays with the ambitions of going uh, into transition? You know, uh, Total has no problem to finance its project. I mean, uh, we issue bonds at a very low level. And you should make, by the way, we have a paradox today, which is uh, I'm giving a, a dividend which is not far from 8 to 9% to my shareholders at the same time. I had access during the crisis to uh, more than $10 billion of bonds, which we emitted at 30 years long, uh, at 2%. So, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure why I'm listed today, but uh, I mean, it, it will come back. I mean, there is, there is a big, nice room to uh, re rate the, the, the shares, so I invite you to buy shares of Total, all of you. You will see, because the company is clearly uh, going the right direction and is uh, in all particular. Uh, to make its own transformation and contribute. So I would say uh, we finance our exploration or on balance sheet. The, the, the one of the issues could come, there is a debate about uh, supporting for credit export agency, uh, hydrocarbon uh, projects. I would very encourage uh, European governments not to make a huge mistake, which would be to stop financing uh, gas projects, because these gas, natural gas, LNG projects are absolutely fundamental. There will be no net zero if we don't help the Asian countries to shift from coal to gas. It's absolutely impossible. There is no system which will work, energy system which will work only for renewables. It's not stable, it's not, there is not enough stora energy storage. So we can have a very long-term view, but we have also to be pragmatic. And I always remind to everybody, if today, by a magic tool, we would be able to transform all the coal fire power plant in gas fire power plant, would be immediately today in a world on the, on the, on the two-degree tra trajectory. So, I mean, uh, so I think it's a matter, of course, and, uh, and don't make a mistake. It's not because Europe takes a stance. Europe represents only 8% of the emission. Climate change is a global challenge, it's a global one. So even if we reduce our emissions to 0, 8%, we will not change the world alone. And I think trying to, to give lessons, it's good. I think I'm a strong believer that Europe is right in the Green Deal because it could be a way to be at the forefront and to create a new economy and to engage in opportunities. At the same time, we should not say we know everything for the rest of the world and to exclude. Excluding will never bring the solution because we have to, to bring to India a solution, not just tell them you are wrong. And, uh, if we exclude natural gas from the mix, which I think would be, the, well, we tell you all these Asian countries will have a mix of coal and renewable, which is their natural trend, because India has only one natural resource, which is coal. So if we don't allow them, if we don't help them to go themselves to that transition, at the end, we'll have a mix of coal and renewables, which frankly does not give a solution to the climate change. Of course, on this way towards the green agenda with the whole ambitions by, the, by Total, by France, by the European Union and globally, as you said, since, since this is rather a global challenge of climate change, we are also hitting this very interesting period and aspect of the whole energy transition that will take some time. And of course, this transition will require huge investment. How to finance those projects, how to make sure that the transitions goes possibly as smooth as it can go. We have to finance them by mobilizing every, every, all the resources, including what we do within a company like an oil and gas company like Total. In fact, what do we do today? Our transformation. I'm using the cash which is produced from my oil operations to invest it in the green electricity that we want to produce. So we make the transfer. And without the oil and gas cash, I would not be able to transition, in fact, and to transform the company. So I think it's quite, uh, it's quite important to know that. Of course, there are other tools, and Total know that we have set clear targets. 
And the last one that we have announced last week, which is quite important, on our way to carbon neutrality in Europe, we said that between today and 2030, in the next 10 years, we'll decrease the scope-free emissions of our customers in Europe by 30%. And that globally, and we are the first uh, global oil and gas company to take that commitment, that globally, at the world level, all scope-free, the scope-free of our customers will decline between 2020 and 2030 at the world level, which are two strong commitments beyond what we said already. Of course, now I have all these KPIs, and so the next step for my CFO will go to go to the market uh, with uh, what we call the sustainable bonds, and we intend to issue more and more, make our emissions based and linked to this KPI, because we see a, a general trend from the finance world requiring, I would say, to demonstrate that there is a compatibility between the money which is used in the energy and the global climate change. So we have now all the metrics, the KPI in our hands and the commitments we took to be able to go to that. And that will be, I think, uh, the next step to continue to finance our operations. And how the issue of, and the question of taxonomy, how is it weighing into investing those products and the transition? To be honest, I'm a little worried about the impact of taxonomy, I will be clear. I think it's uh, because there is a temptation again in Europe to exclude. I, I think it's, uh, it will not be the way to, 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 to help you. The, if the taxonomy does not rec recognize the progress which, progress which are done in many areas, will, it will have no impact. Exclusion like sanctions in the geopolitical world will not work. And you know what will be the result is to exclude? Should I take the decision to exit oil in my company? Two consequences. I will say, okay, I will not have any more the cash to finance the transformation. It could be a why not. But I will tell you, it will not have a, any impact on the climate change. Because the production that I will not produce, pro national companies from producing countries will produce it. People have to understand that in this world of oil and gas, more than 70% of the production is in the hands of national companies. And at reserves are in the hands of 90% in the hands. And I can tell you today, I can observe some speeches from national companies which are quite happy. And I say, okay, all these international companies will leave the market and we will have more market share for us. So this, is, this exclusion idea is a mistake. I think taxonomy should look to, uh, I mean, concepts like what are, who are the best in class to force, again, to have a positive impact on the transformation on the European comp companies, but the way it works, because when you look to the oil and gas majors, in fact, you can see a divide in the world between the European major company, like myself, or colleagues of BP and Shell, who are all elaborating more and more of, I would say, transitioning strategy, all of us, so we are committed to do that, while we are also responsible to serve our customers, because our customers still require today oil and gas, and we will adapt our system to our customers. But at the same time, you can see that over the, the major companies from the other side of the Atlantic are far from this strategy. So there is a clear influence, I would say, of the European ecosystem on its European champions. But just to tell us you are brown or, or dark, uh, that it will not help. I mean, it will not help. And uh, the result, you know, is that companies like us will find finance in other parts of the world uh, because we are, we are not only in Europe. So again, taxonomy, I, I, I will support it, pro providing that it helps it positively in the, in the, to progress. And it recognizes the progress which is done. If we just to vindicate some companies, then uh, don't be surprised if uh, European companies are going elsewhere. So if rethought and adjusted accordingly, taxonomy, in fact, could be a good driver and could yeah. help a lot in transition for companies yeah. and for I industries take, and take. could contribute into the project's financing yeah, and course. development. L look, it could contribute. For example, let's take nat natural gas. Mm -hmm. uh, and today you have a debate, by the way, on natural gas. And some European countries, obviously, which today their energy mix is full of coal. If they don't take nuclear, which the taxonomy is not in favor, what do they have? Renewables, but they need natural gas. So at the end, because what happened in California during this summer, with, which is dominated by renewable energy, is that because there were fire, 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 fireworks in, um, in California, there was a smog, the solar panels did not produce as much as expected, and then there was a blackout. Do you think that really 
but European customers are ready to accept some power blackout? No. No, they, will, they are not accepting, will not accept it. And so uh, that means because energy, there are fundamentals, one of them is reliability, the other one is affordability, and the last one, of course, is environmental friendly. So that means that we need to help these countries, and there is a debate about a certain emission factor on natural gas for a pipe or a plant. What is written today in the taxonomy, 100 milligram, means zero project, zero gas pipe or a plant projects. That's, that's exclusion. And again, it's on the contrary, what the European Bank has done, uh, European Investment Bank has done, by the way, sorry for that, uh, uh, they have put another emission factor of 250. At this level, we can probably build some new, very modern gas fire power plant, filling them not only with natural gas, but also with a mix of biomethane of hydrogen, which is positive again, because you encourage the transition of these countries, and at the same time, you develop the technology. So the tax taxonomy, can be very useful, providing that the, the content of it does not lead to exclusion because of a new, I would say, uh, uh, a new credo coming from uh, people who are probably too extreme. Uh, just, I said a word about the European Investment Bank. I, I should praise that this is a very useful instrument in Europe. We just finance, we are financing with them our development of European charging points. And I thank them to, to contribute to, again, that's another very important infrastructure. Today, we, Europe is pushing all the car manufacturers to produce more and more EVs. If we don't embark very quickly, very quickly, in, uh, I would say, a European sky scale, fast charging point networks at the European scale, the customers will not buy the cars because they want a car is a symbol of freedom. They want to be sure that they can charge their point and not in one hour, but in six to 10 minutes, everywhere where it go. That represents an investment of infrastructure that the private companies are not able today to finance because the return, the payback for us is more than 15 years. There is no customers, very few customers. But it's chicken and egg. So that's the type of infrastructure if Europe wants to be consistent because the pressure they put on one side of car manufacturers that we need globally to finance. And I hope that the Green Deal and the, the 750 million euro, part of it, three, four billion will be used to establish this infrastructure, which is absolutely fundamental to, uh, to go to, uh, to get to net zero. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick Bernier, Chairman and CEO at Total. Thank you for this chat and for the first fireside chat of the inaugural day of the Paris Thank Infra Week. Thank you for week. the invitation and I hope I have convinced your people in the room and elsewhere. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.